Hello everyone! Welcome back to another Stitches and Scribbles video. My name is Erin and today we are doing lots of craft fair prep here in the Stitches and Scribbles world. So for today, first of all I'm going to apologize for any background noise. I am filming in my basement to kind of keep my craft fair prep contained. But today we are going to be making some soap savers. So for these I am using a scrubby yarn but you can also do them in cotton and I'll show you the materials that you are going to need in just a second. The purpose of these is they work as both a washcloth and a soap containment method. So you actually put your bar soap inside the little bag, cinch it up, and then you can scrub it and use it as both the washcloth and it prevents your soap ends from getting lost. So really useful. Um, I have one that I made almost two years ago now that is still going strong. So they definitely last a really long time and they end up saving soap because you don't lose the little ends when you're getting near done with it. Let's go over some materials for today. The yarn I'm going to use is the Red Heart Scrubby Sparkle and the blue one I just showed you is the same yarn, both shades of it. Um, that one was just made with some leftovers. This one is in the color Oyster. It comes in lots of fun colors. There's also a regular Red Heart Scrubby that is not the like really plasticky feel. It's a little bit more cottony. I have used that one in the past for this as well. It still works just fine. And again, you can also use um, any cotton that will work in a knitting machine. I really like using this type of yarn because it lathers really well with bar soap. It exfoliates my skin and it dries out a little better. The cotton ones definitely stay damp for a while, so I do recommend these, um, even though I have all three options at my craft fair table most of the time. In addition to your yarn, you're also going to need a small knitting machine. I have the Addy brand one. The Centro one would also work just fine. You also could just knit a flat panel or knit in the round instead of using a machine if that's what you prefer. You're also going to need some form of scissors, any tool that you might need to correct stitches on your machine, a crochet hook, and a yarn needle. I'm using the crochet hook that actually came with my old Centro. It's a 3.75 millimeter. The size doesn't matter too much, but you probably want to go with something pretty close to what's recommended on your yarn label. I'm just using this one because it happens to be out. For this, you are also going to need some waste yarn. So I have some acrylic that I think also came with a knitting machine or came in a pack for something that I use up for this. So we're going to start with that waste yarn. On your knitting machine, find the first black pin if you're using an Addy, the Centro. I know that your starting pin is a different color as well. And we're just going to cast on with that waste yarn and do about five rows total. On this end, it doesn't really need to be that much because it won't unravel from this side by itself. We're going to get a couple rows in there. All right, and once you hit those first couple rows, you're going to release your yarn from that tensioner. You're going to find the end of your scrubby yarn. Mine just yarn barfed everywhere. Find the end of your scrubby yarn and you're going to start with that yarn. Um, when you start with your scrubby yarn, leave quite a bit of a tail because we're going to use that to sew one end closed at the end. Then feed your yarn through there, set your counter to zero, and you're going to start that scrubby yarn. And you're going to keep going with your scrubby yarn until you have 35 rows on your machine. Once you get to 35 rows, you're going to release your yarn from the yarn guide, but we're not going to cut it off. We're actually just going to shove it into the middle because you're going to need that yarn attached for a later step. Then you can go back to your waist yarn, 
loop it in, put it through the feeder. Make sure that you don't miss your yarn on that last stitch and go for a few rows. On this end of the waist yarn, you wanna make sure you do have like more like six to seven rows instead of four or five because this end will not be sealed off. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure you have a little bit more length so you don't lose any stitches. see there it's getting tight because of how the yarn underneath is twisting up but that's probably good for a number of rows so I'm going to trim my waist yarn and keep cranking until it all just kind of comes off. Once you extract your piece from your knitting machine you should have something that looks like this. Mine got a little messy at the ends just because of how it was twisting up but that's okay. We're going to start with the end that you started your tube with, so the one where we left some string at the end, and go ahead and thread that through a yarn needle. To close this up, we're going to be mimicking a knit stitch on the bottom. So you're going to go in one stitch on one side, and up and out the stitch immediately next to it. And now we're going to switch sides that we're working on. So we're going to go in that first stitch, up and out the second stitch. Sorry if there's a weird pause in this video. There were some more pipe noises so I had to pause. Um, now we're going to be linking the stitches together. So on the first side we worked on you're going to go in the second of the two stitches we worked into before and up and out the next one. And then you're going to keep doing that. So in the stitch we already worked on, out the stitch immediately next to it. You're going to do this all the way across. And this just links both sides together with something that looks like another row of knit stitches instead of there being a super obvious seam at the bottom. I also like this method just because it holds everything together really nicely and because it's not just a single like whip stitch sewn in um, there's not as much tension on the yarn itself so you don't have to worry about breakage as much. I wouldn't be too worried about breakage with this type of yarn anyway but if you're making something with a different yarn that's a little bit more delicate on the knitting machine that is a concern, so I like this method of closing up the project because it just keeps everything nice and secure. Through the last one. And then you're just going to tie a knot with your remaining end. You can slide that needle off for now. And then we're going to pull out our waist yarn before we move on to the next step so that it's out of the way. This end is a little trickier to pull apart because one end is sealed. So I usually kind of just start pulling on the end tail until I figure out how it's looped through. And then once you get one row out, the rest comes out pretty easily, assuming that it doesn't stop and get tangled, which mine definitely has. <laughs> We're going to pause and come back when I get that out. Okay, now my waist yarn is out on the first side, so you should have a nice clean edge that just looks like that. Now we're going to work with our other edge that should still be attached to your ball of yarn. Go ahead and pull out a little bit of yarn so that you have some to work with. And for this part, you're also gonna need your crochet hook. So I'm just going to very carefully locate 
where my yarn is coming out and I kind of flip that waist yarn section inside out so that I can access the stitches. Then you should see a row of stitches going across kind of just like what we did with sewing the end but instead we're going to single crochet into each one of those loops. So there's a single crochet, single crochet, and keep going around. And before you start single crocheting these loops, it's really important to go around your entire piece and double check that you haven't dropped any stitches because this is the point where you could pretty easily pick them back up. But once you've done your crochet edging, first of all, you can't undo it because then you'll lose the stitches after you remove the waste yarn. But this would be a spot where it's pretty easy to pick those stitches back up before continuing on. Keep single crocheting all the way around. And with this step, it's better to have too many stitches than too few. So if you see a loop where you're not sure if it's one you should pick up or not, go ahead and pick it up because it's better than accidentally leaving it behind. To pull out a little bit more working yarn. That is the one negative of the sparkle yarn is that even if you find a center pull one, um, it doesn't pull out very evenly on its own, but that's okay. All right, once you have gotten to the end, go ahead and slip stitch to join with that first single crochet. Now we're going to create some holes that our drawstring can eventually go through. And again, before you keep going, just kind of Take a quick check, make sure that you don't have any dropped stitches anywhere. And now we can keep going. So I'm going to start with chaining four. And that's going to count as a double crochet and a chain one. You're going to skip the first stitch, double crochet in the second one. Chain one, skip one stitch, and double crochet. This part can be really hard if you have a dark yarn, but also no one's going to really see your stitches. So if it's not absolutely perfect, it's not really going to hurt anything or even really affect the functionality of the bag that much. But if you are a beginner, definitely start with a lighter colored yarn like the gray or the white or even like pink or yellow would probably work well too. Keep going all the way around. And once you reach the end, you can just slip stitch into the third chain of that chain four. Then trim your yarn with enough so that you have an end to weave in. Pull that last one through. Now we can take off the waste yarn on this side I like to kind of tuck the tail that I just made down into the piece just to keep it out of the way. And then you can start dismantling your waist yarn. Mine's pretty tangled, so I'm actually gonna pause and come back. Now you should have a little bag that looks like this. At this point, I'm gonna go ahead and weave in my ends and make sure that they are tucked on the inside of the bag. Once your bag is complete and you have all those ends woven in, we're going to create the drawstring. And all this is is chain stitches to the length that you want. So I'm going to start with a slip knot, pick up my crochet hook, and just start chaining. For this size soap saver, I usually like to have about a six to eight inch chain, I think is what I usually go with. 
just enough so that it can be fed through and have a little bit of slack. Keep chaining until you get to your desired length. If you are planning on making a soap saver using a different method, so not a knitting machine, if you're crocheting or knitting these by hand, um, this yarn may get very irritating for you after a while. That's why I prefer doing most of the work on the knitting machine um, because then it's not as rough on my hands. If you are hand knitting them though, I would recommend putting the price up just to make it worth your while to still do these. Um, for me at craft fairs, I usually price these at around $10. I can usually get three to four complete soap savers out of one skein and then usually enough to make like a part of another one after that. Um, once you've finished your chain, go ahead and thread the end onto your yarn needle and then you're going to just start weaving it back and forth through those double crochet holes to create the drawstring. Um, I price these at $10 because I get about three out of each skein and I can easily make three in an hour. So that's a good price point for me, but obviously adjust for things like how much yarn costs for you, how long it takes you to, to create one of these, if you are using a different method, if you have any craft thread fees that you need to take care of. Once I've threaded that through and trimmed the ends, I'm just going to tie both of them in a knot. That's just my personal preference. It also makes sure that the chain does not disappear on you. And that is your finished soap saver. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you decide to create your own, I'd love to see them. Um, tag me on Instagram. All my social media information is going to be in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Happy crafting!